The literary nature of the Bible opens the way to its being studied as part of the literature curriculum of any school. This is not the only place in which to locate the academic study of the Bible, but it is the most natural place. Among other considerations, it is useful to note that there is something prototypical about the Bible. In the Bible, we see the essential principles of literature highlighted. This makes the Bible the best possible introduction to literature and its techniques. Mabuhay! This is J. Ian Kapungan presenting to you the 10 things you should know about the Bible as literature. Let me open this discussion with an opening verse from Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. I personally chose this topic to give us an in-depth knowledge about the purpose of the Bible as an important literature. However, this brings us to question, is the Bible an important literature? In my own opinion, yes, it is the world's most famous literary work. In fact, it is the central book of English-speaking cultures throughout the ages. It has provided a cohesive frame of reference, what some literary scholars would call the mythological universe for England and America. Compared to the Bible, even collected works of Shakespeare are demonstrably in the second tier. The idea of the Bible as literature did not begin in the modern era. As I try to be a spokesman for the Bible as literature, let me first clear the ground of misconceptions and then make the positive case for the importance of reading and interpreting the Bible in keeping with its literary nature. Because the phrase, the Bible as literature, came on the scene in the middle of the 20th century. It is understandable that evangelicals might be suspicious of the idea, but such towering theological stalwarts from the past such as Augustine, Luther, and Calvin did not doubt that the Bible has literary qualities. Viewing the Bible as literature is not necessarily a sign of theological liberal liberalism because liberal biblical scholars have been more inclined than conservative ones to practice literary approaches to the Bible. It is easy to associate those approaches with theological liber liberalism, but there is no necessary connection between them. I begin in the literature of the Bible by biblical authors about the unique nature of the Bible, its inspiration, its infallibility, and so forth. Then I say that for me, a literary study of the Bible begins where any other study of it begins, by affirming as true everything that the Bible claims about itself. I find no discord between what I believe about the Bible and my literary study of it. To say that the Bible is literature need not imply that it is fictional rather than factual. Most literature is fictional at some level, but fictionality is not a defining trait of literature. A piece of writing is literary whenever authors employ literary techniques, regardless of whether they record what really happened or made it up. When we find literary qualities in the Bible, we are not adding those traits to the Bible. To people unfamiliar with the literary approach to the Bible, 
it may seem that literary scholars are adding something to the Bible, but this is a false impression. When we interact with the Bible using literary tools of analysis, we are not adding something, but are discovering what is already in the text. We could not treat the story of Samson as a literary tragedy if it did not possess the qualities of that genre. The idea of the Bible as literature began with the writers of the Bible. It is the writers of the Bible who gave us a literary Bible. So the origin of the concept can be traced back to them. We catch a hint of this from the way in which some biblical authors speak with technical precision about the literary genres in which they wrote. Sam, Chronicle, Song, Parable, Epistille, Apocalypse, and others. But the chief evidence is the literary nature of what they wrote. Every page of the Bible contains at least some incidents of literary technique and many pages are completely filled with it. The subject of literature is human experience. Several qualities make a text literary and it is easy to overlook the most basic and universal principle of literature. That principle contains the content of literature. Literature takes human experience as its subject. When we read a work of literature, we share an experience. Literature is truthful to life and experience and is not primarily a delivery system for an idea. A literary approach to the Bible identifies and relieves the human experiences that are portrayed and avoids reducing the Bible to a set of ideas. Literature is an embodiment and incarnation of its subject matter. Professors who teach literature and creative writing claim that literature shows rather than tells. To show is to embody concretely. To tell is to express an abstraction or idea. The sixth commandment tells us, you shall not murder. The story of Cain and Abel in Genesis 4 verses 1 to, 6, 1 to 16 shows and embodies that truth. And it does so without using the abstraction murder and without commanding us to refrain from it. When the rich young ruler asked Jesus to define neighbor, Jesus instead told a story, and that is the parable of the Good Samaritan. That shows us what neighborly behavior looks like. A literary approach to the Bible interacts with the embodied experiences that biblical authors place before us. Artistry is an important part of the literature or the literary nature of the Bible. God did not neglect beauty when he created the world, and he did not neglect it when he superintended the composition of the Bible. The literary parts of the Bible are replete with artistry, and to pay attention to it and unfold it through analysis is an important part of a literary approach to the Bible. Doing so can add a whole new dimension and level of enjoyment to our reading and study of the Bible. Additionally, we need to operate on the premise that biblical authors regarded everything that they put into their works as important and worthy of our attention, including artistic aspects. Respecting the literary aspects of the Bible is a way of observing the biblical author's intentions. For a very long time, the cornerstones of evangelical hermeneutics has been authorial intention, 
the need to interpret a passage in keeping with an author's inferred intention. It is time that we put the literary approach to the Bible under the rubric, under that rubric. It stands to reason that if a biblical author entrusted his message to literary forms and techniques, he intended that we apply ordinary methods of literary analysis to the text. Reading the Bible as literature is within every reader's ability because most evangelicals pay scant atten attention to liter literary nature of the Bible. The misconception gets perpetuated that literary approach is specialized and technical. In fact, all it requires is that we carry over what we know about literature generally to the Bible. We have all had high school or college liter literature courses in which we learned that plot, setting, and character are the elements of a story, and that poets think in images and figures of speech. All we need to do is put what we already know into practice when we read and interpret the Bible. In the last half century, biblical scholars have begun experimenting with literary theory as method for interpretation. The tools of literary analysis provoke readers of the Bible to engage in new ways of reading. These scholars seek to go beyond the focus of historical, critical interpretation by paying closer attention to the literary artistry that is inherent in the Bible. Though the field remains somewhat nascent, many standard books and scholars have emerged. As with all academic genres, the range of literary interpretations of the Bible are vast and only partially congruent with one another. This is a finding aid and recommendation of major resources. How should we read the Bible as literature? The answer, we should apply exactly the same methods of literary analysis to the Bible that we use for other literature. This is not to say that the Bible is in every way just like other books. It is rather to say that the literary aspects of the Bible do not require anything different from ordinary tools of analysis. In the Bible, no less than in English and American literature, a story consists of settings, characters, and action. The poetry of the Bible is made up of images and figures of speech. Thank you very much and may this presentation sheds light on the aspect of the Bible as literature.